So um, I was responded really to the request to get somebody to speak about being on a trial. Um, so why am I on a trial? So my, in a sort of short version, my story is I was diagnosed with ocular melanoma in um, 2009 and I had plaque therapy. Um, it recurred in 2015 and I had further plaque therapy and um, some laser treatment which was not successful, so I had my eye enucleated in January 2016. Um, in March this year, I, um, on, on um, scanning, I was found to have metastases in my liver. From there, I, it was hoped that I could have a resection, but at laparoscopy, that was found not to be the case. Um, and so I then went on to... Um, see what alternatives were available for me. Now, I want to emphasise, having listened to Ian this morning, that this is my story, and it doesn't reflect any sort of anything medical at all. He talked this morning about the importance of data and not opinion, so everything I'm going to talk about is opinion and not data. <laughs> um, I chose the trial. We looked at lots of alternatives, tried to find out what was out there, and my, my scientific daughter found Documel, and I got an awful lot of help from the people here. Um, we looked everywhere for advice and help, and sometimes I found that the information was overwhelming and too much, particularly when you've just had that sort of diagnosis. I think at times I was a bit like an ostrich in the sand, but my daughter definitely wasn't. Um, we looked at different lines and looked at the options, I was HLA2 negative, so was ruled out of the immunotherapy trial, which was a real blow at the time. You don't think about these things. You get the diagnosis and then you get hit with, feels like a blow after a blow. It's that roller coaster that we live on. Um, so when I came to be put forward for the Delcast trial, it really was my only option and I had no choice. Um, I just tried to deal with it. Um, I found it helpful to trust decisions that, as they were made and move forward. And, and to look forward and not backwards. Things are changing all the time, and I think it's very, it's not helpful to look backwards because you've done the best you can at the time. We looked at the outcomes, but we also looked at the impact on our lives with things like travelling and side effects, and also the number of follow-up visits afterwards that would impact on our lives as a family. We also considered whether the trial would limit inclusion in other and future trials. And it was really hard to get that sort of information, but at the end of the day, I really didn't have a choice. Um, I had to actually ask for a referral to Delcath. It wasn't something that was offered to me initially, um, and I only knew it was there because of Ocumel. Um, my oncologist was, was a specialist, but not in OM or anything to do with liver. Um, and he was really open and honest, said he didn't know about the trial. Um, but was really, um, unlike some I know, have had to fight to get the treatment they want. He was really helpful and referred me straight away. I knew being on a trial is a risk. I decided I did not need to know everything. I actually didn't watch the videos about what they actually do on the Delcath until after I'd had Delcath 2. I, wasn't, I just, just needed to put that away and get on with it. I did find the pathway quite stressful at times. Um, you, know, you, you go through the assessments, will you meet the criteria? Um, I knew they were there for safety and also that they were important when you're on a trial to make sure the tri trial was robust and valid. Um, but they could be difficult to cope with and thinking about the what ifs if you didn't get on, it was very hard. I made, was made decisions about what would happen next if I didn't get on the treatment. And it was quite frightening dealing with the alternatives. I, have to, I had done the this is it bit, and then the, be, the chance to be on the Delcath gave me a bit of hope. And the thought of not getting it was really quite difficult to deal with. Um, the, I found the process of the randomization a bit like playing lottery with my life. The morning uh, they sent off, I knew I, I had fill, fulfilled the criteria, I knew all my information had been sent off to America, waiting for the phone call as to whether I was on the Delcath arm or the alternative arm was not, not, an easy, not an easy time. I felt enormously lucky to be accepted, 
but at times I almost feel... They talk about survivor guilt, don't they? I've had a bit of acceptance guilt because, you know, I know there are people that didn't get that arm and I know the trial has been altered now, but it's a bit, quite a hard place to be at times, being, feeling very lucky to be on it but knowing others haven't been so lucky. Um, on the trial, it's really important... Um, I think with any trial that you contact the nurses with any symptoms at all, however insignificant they seem to you. Um, and it, I have to contact them about anything that I want to do or change in, in the information that I've given them already. So, for example, yesterday I was, was ringing them up to see whether I should have the flu jab because it's been on the site talking about the flu jab. Now, I usually have it, but I wasn't sure whether I would need... You know, whether there would be a restriction or not, and there wasn't. Um, and I've fed back to them lots of information. And I think if anybody is on a trial, it's really important to realise that the nurses there are trial nurses. And they don't necessarily know of everything else that's going in the hospital. On in the hospital. They were really surprised when I started discussing with them the pre-op treatment of washing with chlorhexidine 2% <laughs> for several days. And... Because they're not there, they don't see it, they don't know about it. Um, so tell them everything. The trial guidance is really specific um, in relation to scans and timing and screening and when you have to have these things and when you have to have the blood tests. Um, as part of it, I have to complete questionnaires that include my symptoms, my quality of life, but they're, not, they're only short and they're not an issue. And I think being on the trial probably means I have to attend the centre more often than otherwise. Um, having had my Delcath, I have to go back for at least the next two weeks to meet and have blood tests and screening. Emotionally, being accepted was an enormous relief. Um, but I now find myself thinking about what next. So today has been really interesting. I found working actively to stay relaxed and chilled when coping with the unknown really helpful. I've also learned from my daughter the benefit of inane distraction. We had a pretty rough couple of years as a family. We lost, um, we lost our son-in-law and our granddaughter in very close succession. And sitting with my daughter in an ITU, she um, was playing on her phone. I said, what are you doing? And she said, I just sit here and do this because then I can listen, but I'm not concentrating totally. So when I got this diagnosis, I sit in clinic doing my Sudoku or playing a silly game or listening to a book. And coping with the trial and the bits that have been worrying, I, I found that distraction really helpful. Um, I've put a heading of support. I'm really lucky. I, I've had support in so many forms. I've got three very different daughters who support me in different ways and a very tolerant husband who copes with both my introverted days when I turn my back and go on my iPad and when I lose my call cool, um, and to have Ocumel. I've put a big hurrah by on Ocumel. Um, I've been enormously grateful to them being here. I do find it really hard to know how much information to give everyone. I think Mick's found it quite hard listening to everything today because I think I've known a lot about what to expect and where to go and I think it's probably slammed it home a little bit today. Um, but everybody is different and it's really hard to know how much to tell everybody in the family about the trial and about the risks. I certainly didn't tell any of them the list of risks that were in the consent I had to sign. <laughs> um, being on a trial is a little is worrying because you mean know it means that things aren't tried and tested. Um, I take the approach that it's giving me a chance. Um, and as Neil said this morning, it, if it doesn't work for me, one of the things that I is important to me is that I'm helping those who that, that will follow. And I think that positive is very important. And I think any positives that you get in this process as an OM, OM patient are really, are really positive and a thing to hold on to. I've had really excellent support from the um, team that are looking after me and a lot of honesty. Um, they've gone over and above. I've even had phone calls at home from a doctor who said he'd see me before discharge and then couldn't, but phoned me to make sure I was all right. It doesn't stop a little niggling worry that they have my best outcomes at heart rather than the trial, but I will be watching them. Um, I do have to 
want to say that I've worked in the NHS and I've heard some of the issues today and I think it's really important that you trust the teams around you and to know that they really are doing their best for you. Um, I know very few people in the NHS that aren't doing their best for their patients at all times. So a couple of things that have helped me through my pathway and particularly through the trial is a few people offer advice and I sometimes put them on the site and it's helped me to cope with going through a trial and having the treatment and coming home. So my three bits of final advice that have helped me are take one day at a time, don't die a thousand deaths, and live every day. And I have to say they're all easier to say than they are to do. Questions about Delcath trial because I know we just talked about it. I really don't mind answering anything. Yeah. Um, where were you being treated where they didn't know about it, and, and where did you go to have it? It was uh, because I was um, diagnosed a, a long time ago. Um, initially, I was just sent to my GP to have routine liver blood screening and ultrasound every. I can't remember if it was six months or a year initially, and my GP then sent me to said to me one day, I think you should be under, under an oncologist. And I actually found my own, um, because he didn't know who to send me to. And um, I got referred to a dermatologist, an oncology dermatologist. And bless him, he said to me, you are the first person with ocular melanoma I've ever looked after when I first went to him. But by the time I went the next time, he knew an awful lot more. Um, and he's been really good. I have great faith in him. Um, and he's been excellent. And I think with a rare disease, that's what's important. You know, we're all learning and taking things forward and sharing. And, you know, when I hear, I think it's important that we take things back to those people that don't know because we're then helping people further on. And as a group, we're spreading that word. Mm.